hey there everyone Ramesh here welcome to my youtube channel and in this video I am going to talk about Java developer roadmap 2021 I have prepared a chart here and uh, just I am going to explain you guys what are the things you have to learn in 2021 to become a Java developer so before getting started I want to highlight few points guys so there are too many things to learn uh, in this Java developer roadmap but as a Java beginner you don't have to learn all the stuff here so at the end of the video I am going to suggest what are the bare minimum things you can learn as a Java beginner to become a Java developer and if you are already a Java developer and you can just go through this Java developer roadmap to fulfill your gaps and uh, yeah so you can just fulfill your gaps by uh, you know going through this Java developer roadmap alright guys 2021 is coming and just plan your Java learnings by looking into this Java developer roadmap alright without further ado let's get started let's begin with core Java so core Java is a base for all other Java W frameworks make sure that you have a good foundation in core Java so here I have listed some of the commonly used core Java topics that you can take a note Java basics so you should have a good understanding of JVM JDK and GRE and how they works and uh, arrays uh, you know and loops control statements variables and access modifiers so these are the Java basics that you should learn first and then you can learn oops concepts string handlings generics collections framework multi-threading and concurrency exception handling and of course you should learn jdbc to connect to uh, different databases and java 8 features you should learn lambda expression java 8 stream apis uh, you know functional interfaces so these are the very important java 8 features as a java programmer you should learn and file io so if you want to work with files and directories then you should learn file io so these are the commonly uh, you know used topics in core java so you can take a note of it next move to the data structures and algorithms well data structures and algorithms are the building blocks for any programming language as a programmer you should have a good understanding of data structures and algorithms so here i have listed some of the commonly used data structures and algorithms data structures like array linked list tag queue binary tree heap graph and algorithms like sorting algorithms and searching algorithms so as a programmer you should have a good understanding of data structures and algorithms as well so while writing a logic you will make use of these data structures and algorithms well next is java testing so we have JUnit framework and Makuto in Java to uh, to uh, you know write a JUnit test cases. So whenever uh, you know you write a logic in your Java projects, then you should um, you know create a JUnit test cases to test your logic. All right, guys. So JUnit uh, in Makuto is very essential uh, skill for Java developer uh, in case of uh, testing your uh, Java development next is relational databases and NoSQL databases so as a Java developer you should have good understanding of databases as well so here I have listed some of the common databases like MySQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle, MS SQL Server so these are the commonly used uh, relational databases then that you can have a look into as a Java developer you should know uh, these commonly used relational databases and here I have listed some of the NoSQL databases like MongoDB and Elasticsearch so these are the you know popular NoSQL databases that uh, you know uh, companies prefer to use as a databases. So there are a lot of NoSQL out NoSQL databases out there like CouchDB, Cassandra, and Solar. So these are the commonly used databases I have listed over here. And next is design patterns. So as a Java developer, you should know the commonly used design patterns uh, so that you can make use of these design patterns in your Java project or Java development. So whenever you develop, uh, you know, architecture for your Java application, then you, you will make use of uh, design patterns like application uh, level design patterns, architecture level design patterns, alright, and uh, 
yeah so here is a gang of four design patterns so have a look into gang all the gang of four design patterns because these are the commonly used design patterns uh, as a java developer you should know all the commonly used design patterns next is desktop application development so if you want to uh, develop a desktop based application then you should learn either swing or java apex so swing is kind of a legacy library and java apex is a modern uh, library that you can use to develop a desktop applications so jsp servlet we use to develop our web applications and jpa is a standard java persistent api which we can use to connect to the databases and to perform different operations and jp is just a you know specification or a standard library uh, but there are a lot of implementations out there like hibernate eclipse link and jaxrs is a standard api for developing rest apis and we have a jersey framework and rest EZ framework so these are the two popular frameworks that implements jaxrs api and we can use jersey framework or rest EZ, uh, framework to develop a rest apis and jaxws is the api that we can use to develop a soap web services all right next we have hibernate hibernate is uh, you know one of the popular orm framework so hibernate is uh, the you know most popular jp implementation and we can use hibernate to directly map object relational object into a relational database table next is spring framework well spring framework is very popular java w framework which we can use to simplify our java w development and we use spring framework to develop enterprise applications spring framework is become a one of the essential skill for java developers so make sure that you will learn spring framework and let me tell you what are the things you need to learn in spring framework you should begin with spring core module so you should learn spring core fundamentals like dependency injection aop spring ioc and bins life cycle of bins so all these fundamentals you should learn so once you are familiar with spring core fundamentals then you can learn spring muc so spring muc model which we can use to develop our web applications and restful web services so once you are familiar with spring core fundamentals and spring muc pro then you can learn spring boot so spring boot is a very popular nowadays for developing restful web services and microservices because it simplifies a lot of spring configuration and the boilerplate code that is required for spring configuration so once you are familiar with spring core fundamentals like dependency injection spring ioc uh, aop and spring bins spring bins life cycles and all the spring core basics then you should learn spring boot don't directly jump into spring boot because spring boot uh, internally uses auto configuration and opinionated approach to configure the configurations so initially you will feel uh, you know very easy but when things get complex then uh, you may not able to understand spring boot internals so make sure you, you you learn spring core basics and then you can learn spring boot Spring Boot has taken Spring Framework to the next level. It has drastically reduced the configuration and setup time required for Spring based projects. You can set up Spring project with almost zero configuration and start building the things that actually matter to your application. And Spring Boot is uh, you know one of the essential skill for Java developers nowadays. Next is Spring Security. Well, Spring Security provides authentication and authorization features. And Spring Security is a very popular uh, module uh, to, you know, to secure our Spring web applications and RESTful APIs. So make sure that you will learn about Spring Security. And Spring Security is one of the, you know, popular uh, security framework in Java. And it provides out of the box authentication and authorization features. And next is spring data jpa spring data jpa which, which we can use to uh, reduce a lot of boilerplate code that is required to develop a DAO layer and spring data jpa internally uses hibernate as a default jpa provider all right guys so if you are developing spring based applications that i am i highly suggest you guys to use spring data jpa 
because we can create a repositories and we can get a full crude operations on entities in spring data jpa spring data jpa it reduces a lot of boilerplate code that is required to develop a DAO layer so i highly suggest you guys to use spring data jpa and there are a lot of other spring models out there uh, to work with different technologies if you want to use elastic search in your spring application then you can use spring data elastic search model or if you want to use work with uh, you know uh, cassandra then you can use a spring data cassandra model so there are a lot of models out there uh, in a spring ecosystem that you can uh, make use of so these are the com commonly used models that i have listed over here develop microservices with spring boot and spring cloud so apart from spring boot you should learn spring cloud so once you are familiar with building rest apis with spring boot then i highly suggest you guys to also learn uh, spring cloud because spring boot and spring cloud uh, you know simplifies the development of microservices and spring cloud offers a lot of you know infrastructure services that are required to build a whole microservices projects so spring boot and spring cloud uh, you know it take years entire architecture of microservice projects we, as a developer we need to only focus on the business services or the business logic all right guys so i highly suggest you guys to you know to learn how to develop microservices with spring boot and spring cloud now let's take a look into the tools for java development well we have apache maven and gradle so these are the two popular build uh, you know tools and dependency management tool in java community so you can learn either Maven or Gradle to work on Java projects. We have a Git. So Git is very popular uh, version control system that you can uh, learn and you can uh, use in your Java project as a version control system. And you can learn Jenkins. You can use Jenkins for continuous integration and continuous delivery of your project. And next is Eclipse and IntelliJ IDEA and NetBeans. So these are the IDEs. In fact, these are the popular IDEs that you can learn to build a Java project. So next is Docker. So Docker is one of the essential skills for Java developer nowadays. So whenever you want to deploy your application on cloud, then you can use Docker to deploy your services and different containers in Docker. And Jira is must known tool for Java developers uh, who are working in IT companies which uses uh, agile methodologies. Jira is basically used for bug tracking, issue tracking and to manage a project and SVN is also a version control system uh, so either you can use git or SVN as a version control for your project. AWS is also an essential skill nowadays uh, to work on cloud so make sure that uh, you will also have a look into the AWS and kubernetes is very uh, a very important skill uh, as a deployment point of view from devops all right guys so make sure that you will learn all these tools uh, to become a java developer and here i have listed some of the commonly used uh, utility libraries for java development so make sure that uh, you check out goa library apache commons libraries jackson json libraries google json libraries and logging libraries, HTTP libraries, XML parsing libraries, and collection libraries. So these are the commonly used utility libraries for Java development. So as a Java developer, you should have a look into all these commonly used utility libraries. Guys, if you look at the chart here, there are a few technologies are missing like JSAP, EJB, and uh, other uh, Java related stuff. But these are the you know commonly used. Uh, technologies tools and the libraries that uh, you know it organizations prefer uh, in a candidate all right guys so if you look at the chat as a java beginner you feel that there are too many things to learn but let me suggest you what are the things you can learn as a java beginner to become a java developer you can just begin with core java fundamentals and you can just have a look into the data structures and algorithm basics and you can learn hibernate framework and you can directly go to the spring framework and just learn spring core fundamentals and then learn spring boot all right guys and you can learn either maven or gradle uh, because these are the build tool and project management dependencies tool so you can learn either one and and just uh, select the 
IDE for building Java project, either Eclipse or IntelliJ IDEA. So AWS, Kubernetes, Jenkins, all right. So these are the uh, advanced skills that you will learn once you start working on real-time projects in IT companies. And these are the libraries that uh, you have, don't have to learn as a Java beginner. Uh, you obviously uh, use these libraries once you will work on real-time projects, guys. All right and microservices also you don't have to learn as a java beginner uh, you can uh, you know just go through the spring boot fundamentals and the spring core fundamentals and relational databases and core java and hibernate all right and don't uh, need to learn gsp nowadays uh, you know it companies are not preferring to use gsps to develop your applications so uh, if you are interested in front-end technologies like javascript then you may learn a javascript based framework like angular or you know react or vue.js and if you want to develop a rest apis then you can use jersey or rest eg but spring boot is very popular framework for developing rest apis so as a java beginner you can just take a look into core java spring spring boot hibernate all right and databases and Marvin or Grider. All that's all, guys. Uh, if you are a Java developer, then you might take a look into uh, the missing stuff that uh, in your list. All right, guys. These are the tools and technologies that you can, uh, you know, learn to become a Java developer in 2021. Thank you, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope this video will help you guys. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys in next video.